the setting of New Zealand's Southern Alps is the Hermitage Tourist Hotel. Using this hotel as their starting base, New Zealand members of the Antarctic Expedition spent some weeks on the Tasman Glacier. This training exercise for the coming polar venture is described by the leader of the New Zealand party, Sir Edmund Hillary. During the autumn and the early winter, our husky dogs were kept in the dog pens uh, near to the hermitage at Mount Cook. And here, before the heavy winter snows made travelling on the glaciers possible, we carried out a great deal of training with our dogs. Of course, we couldn't use our ordinary sledges, there wasn't enough snow around. So instead, we took advantage of the chassis of an old vehicle and we'd hitch our dogs up to this and give them all the training we could on the roads. The dogs became accustomed to having their harness put on them, accustomed to the words of command from their drivers, and even though pulling an old vehicle wasn't quite the same as pulling a sledge, yet it was excellent training for them. Many of the dogs had not worked together in teams, so one of the most important things was getting them accustomed to understanding each other and pulling together as a strong unit. For hour after hour each day, the dogs would be taken out on the roads, given a long run, and then they'd have a, a brief rest before continuing back on the homeward journey. This continued on for some months. But finally, the winter snows approached and the glacier was in a sufficient order that we knew we could move our dogs up. So the old car chassis became abandoned and we moved up onto the snows proper. Our dogs moved down onto the Tasman Glacier and then everything was packed up on the sledges ready for the trip up to our training camp eight miles up the glacier of Malta Brun. Our first trip up was, was quite a big occasion for us. There was a lot of equipment to be moved and the dogs were eager to go. <coughs> They were all harnessed up on the sledges, and then they were off. These dogs were still far from being well trained, and a lot of attention was needed to them to keep them on the right path. A lot of the time, the snow on the way up was deep and soft, and this demanded a great deal of effort out of the dogs. It was very hard going for them, but in places it was firm and hard. And then the dogs could pull the sledge without any difficulty at all even though there was probably a good half ton on the sledge. Now feeding the dogs was one of our biggest problems. And in order to get sufficient meat up the glacier to uh, keep them well fed, we used our beaver aircraft, which was equipped with ski wheels. Under its wings, we loaded large quantities of meat, and then this would be airdropped up on the glacier beside the dogs. So we'd look out of the window of the aircraft and see some good New Zealand mutton against New Zealand scenery. The dogs were always anxious to get their food. After they'd been working hard, they were very hungry indeed. And we kept them well fed. The Maltabrun hut was our main base. And every morning, all the members of the expedition would emerge in various forms of dress and then drop down to the glacier about 500 feet below to commence the activities of the day. Every day, a number of the members of the party would be working on the dogs because the success of the expedition could well revolve about well-trained dogs. After the snowfall of the night before, it was always hard work getting the team going, cutting a deep track. But this was the sort of training for men and dogs which was going to pay dividends later on. dogs prefer to follow a track and one of the tasks of the experts in the expedition was to teach the dogs to make a track for themselves in wide open spaces of snow uh, without any marks on them at all and this demanded a great deal of control uh, from the dogs uh, answering to the voice of the driver. All the members of the party took their turns at camping out on the glacier and there they use the tents and equipment which they'll be using down south. These tents are very ruggedly constructed, are quite heavy, 50 or 60 pounds, and are capable of withstanding 
even the, the heaviest storms that one can experience in the Antarctic. The techniques that all the members of the party were following here are the techniques that they will use later on down in the south. Several of the wives of the expedition members uh, visited the multiburn activities and examined there uh, an igloo which some of the uh, chaps had constructed. The aircraft were carrying out constant flights up and down the glacier and a beaver in particular was the workhorse of the expedition. Flight after flight up and down the glacier carrying loads of meat, of food, and fuel and equipment for the expedition. As well as the beaver, we brought our Austro aircraft up on the glacier with a new pair of skis to try out. And here you see it landing, but unfortunately the skis didn't seem to work. This was rather a blow to the expedition and everybody rushed over to see John Clayton, the pilot, but he crawled out completely unhurt and there he is, second from the right, uh, giving a description of exactly what occurred. We had to notify Wigram of the, uh, what, had, uh, what had happened and immediately get sent up some technical experts to help us fix the plane up again. The weather closed in and for several days we had a very bad blizzard. This gave us a taste of what the Antarctic was going to be like. When it cleared, everything was covered with several feet of snow. But we immediately set to work on the task of getting the buster back into flying order again. It was removed from the glacier, one of the wings was taken off, and then was dragged over to the side. A snow wall was built around it for protection from the wind, and for day after day, the technicians and mechanics worked on it, repairing the wings, fixing the tail, and replacing the skis. When the task was finished, some of the senior officers of the Royal New Zealand Air Force came up to examine the work and give their permission for it to take off again. So the motor was started up, John Clayton got inside again and taxied the aircraft out onto the glacier for takeoff. We were all rather anxious as we watched it going down the runway. None of us quite certain exactly what would happen, but it took off quite safely and flew back to Wigram. The training period had taught us a lot. It had taught us how to handle the dogs, it had given us a lot of experience with our aircraft, and most of all, it had welded all of us into a strong unit.